Anyway, thank you very much uh, for inviting me. Uh, I didn't want to spend too much time on my introduction. Name is Srinivas Rao. Uh, I am from an organization called Global Institute of Supply Management. Uh, that's based out of Bangalore. I have been working in supply chain uh, for 36 plus years. Uh, and GSM is into education, it's into training, uh, it's into expediting, uh, consulting, uh, you know, in the area of supply chain management. I think that is sufficient if you know about me. Uh, you don't have to know much more. Uh, because, you know, like I, I, know I was, I requested not to speak much about me. Because there isn't much to speak also. Because, you know, they say there's a very famous saying that uh, behind every successful man, uh, there is a woman. Okay. So, I just wanted to share uh, that woman's photo. Uh, that is my wife. Okay. And again, two years back, I showed the same photo. I didn't want Dr. Vinod or somebody to say that you showed somebody else's photo last time. And this time you are showing somebody else's photo. Okay. So, all you need to remember is that uh, behind every successful man, uh, there is a woman. But again, what happened? Nobody said. What happens if there is somebody who is unsuccessful? Obviously, behind every unsuccessful man, there are many women, is what I feel. There are too many behind me, and I was you know, never successful in doing anything. Okay, so uh, that, that, that's about me. And uh, uh, I know uh, you have had a tough, you know, tough afternoon yesterday, uh, listening to a lot of uh, technical aspects. Uh, so I call this as my, my, my menu for you guys, a four course uh, menu. Okay, uh, I will be discussing about maybe the stakeholders uh, in uh, healthcare supply chain, uh, challenges faced by the healthcare supply chain today, uh, new strategies in uh, healthcare supply chain, and maybe the conclusion. Obviously, uh, you will all be eager to know how long this is, this guy is going to speak. I can't speak beyond 45 minutes. That's the time allocated to me, and I wanted to know from her, the MC, what happens if I speak, you know, for just 30 minutes. She didn't have any answer, but she seemed to be very happy. So I will try to finish as early as possible. And uh, you know, another query that everybody has is how many slides this speaker has. Okay, I mentioned the number of slides there. I have only nine active slides. There are around 16 slides, but out of that, nine are active slides. So you can keep counting also how many slides this fellow has completed. Okay, so the slide number is mentioned at the top on the corner on the left side. Okay, or on the right side as you see. Okay, so this is the slide number one. So my slides will be exactly nine, and after that, maybe if we, uh, if you have queries, I would like to answer uh, your, your queries. For us in supply chain management, it's important that we know uh, who are the stakeholders you know, in the in the healthcare uh, industry. Uh, obviously, it's all very clear to us. We have the producers of various consumables, various materials, uh, various equipment, uh, maybe machine, uh, even the vehicle like ambulance. Uh, you have uh, maybe the uh, pharma companies who, are, who play a very big role. Then there are purchasers, the wholesalers, the distributors, and of course the GPOs. Okay, GPOs of course uh, in more in uh, uh, the Western countries they have these GPOs who do the counselling and uh, who recommend medicines who don't give any treatment as such. And uh, uh, various service providers like hospitals, nursing homes, uh, the physicians, clinics, uh, pharmacies, nursing homes, etc. You also have the insurance companies, they do have a stake uh, in, in the business that you are in uh, or the service that you are in. Government anyway has uh, a big stake and of course the regulatory agencies, we are all bound by a lot of regulations. So these are the stakeholders who play a very critical role in whatever decision we take, what kind of consumables we buy, what kind of equipment we buy, uh, what kind of uh, uh, machine we acquire for the organization, uh, these people do have a stake. One important stakeholder that I have not listed here are the doctors. I feel uh, that you know most uh, because I am not a do you know, doctor uh, by myself or I am not from the healthcare industry, I am from the uh, other industry, I have worked in various other industries, I have mentioned that uh, 36 plus years. So my uh, viewpoint is totally uh, an external uh, person's viewpoint. So if, uh, if, you know, if required, please take it with a pinch of salt, but you must really know you know who are the you know, stakeholders, and the main main one is to me a doctor or a healthcare specialist, and a lot of decisions are taken uh, based on uh, you know uh, what they say or what they think is right for, maybe for the patient, maybe for the hospital. So I I thought, and I'm sorry, Doctor Vinod, I have shared this earlier. You may have seen this, 
Okay, uh, but uh, one or two additions are also there. I call this as you know, like uh, this particular thing as the uh, in the Indian wonderland of the Indian doctors or doctors. Okay, so it's important that we know what kind of doctors uh, we uh, uh, we face or we may have to face because some of your students when we get into the industry, what kind of doctors we may have to face. So I have tried to this. This is not available in any of the, the books. This is my creation. Okay, so. What are the various types of healthcare specialists? Is what we will see, and the, you know what kind of decisions they may take, and what kind kind of response you may have to give. The very first type of uh, doctor, uh, I call these people as the fly-by-night operators. You will have all have fly-by-night operators uh, as doctors. They are here today, gone tomorrow. So when they come to your hospital, you know you need to identify that okay, these are people who may not stick uh, with, with your organization for a long time. Any medicine, you know, anything that is new, either in the area of uh, consumables, medicines, or uh, uh, the uh, machine or equipment, uh, you should be a bit careful uh, because these people are uh, here today, gone tomorrow. You buy something because they have asked you to buy, uh, you know, and uh, they may not be there to use those consumables or the machine. Okay, so these are the very <coughs> first kind of uh, uh, doctors, doctor fly by night operator. Second one is known as Dr. Arrogant. This person comes into the hospital every day, does not bother to say hi, hello, good morning to anybody. Straight away comes in. That person must be arrogant because maybe uh, he or she is very popular, uh, highly known uh, in the region or highly known in the industry. Uh, comes, you know, does not even smile perhaps. Uh, but then these guys are also required, these doctors are required. They may sound arrogant, uh, they may sound rude. Uh, but then uh, you have to talk to them nicely, you have to be friendly with them and then maybe uh, you know your friendship will help you go a long way uh, because these are the people uh, who are good but uh, you know the uh, success may have gone to their head, uh, that's why they may have become arrogant. But uh, again be careful, uh, anytime anybody is uh, too arrogant, I think the downfall starts, so nobody should be arrogant, the success should not go to somebody's head. Okay. So the third type of doctor is known as Dr. Gold Digger. Try to, of course, relate it. I know some of you have been interacting with doctors, and some of you are doctors. See if uh, uh, you are you are you are the same. So these uh, people are known as Dr. Gold Diggers. Uh, they will only, of course, uh, go for better and better salaries. That is the reason they change. So they all keep on looking out for better and better maybe facilities, better and better perquisites, and more higher and higher salaries. So again, these are the people uh, who may be here, uh, but uh, may be gone tomorrow. Or there's a possibility that these are the gold diggers for the organization. Uh, because of their name, your organization gets a lot of business, and uh, uh, you know your management also pampers them. Uh, they are very close to the management because they are very close to the management. You know whatever you say may not uh, really be uh, listened uh, listen by them. They may not pay much attention to you. But because they get a lot of business, uh, the hospital or the firm also uh, gives a lot of importance to them. Next one is known as Dr. Globetrotter. He or she is uh, here today at this conference. Tomorrow, you know, he or she leaves for some other program. Like yesterday we had, uh, I think, Professor Anand coming from IIM. Uh, he was here today, yesterday and today he is already in Amritsar. Early morning he left. These are people who move around a lot. They attend a lot of conferences. Uh, they are never available when perhaps there is some emergency is there. You know, the moment you phone, uh, maybe his or her patient is here and then you are told that the person is somewhere in uh, uh, USA or uh, Germany or uh, you know, some place attending some conference. Good to have those kind of doctors. They have a lot of knowledge. They are up to date in their knowledge. When they come back, maybe you should talk to them, try to learn more. Because if you are friendly with these people, uh, you know, people who acquire, keep acquiring knowledge, maybe because of conferences, maybe because of the hospitals they visit, Maybe because of uh, uh, the knowledge they gain, I think they are a good source of knowledge. You can say that they are like uh, moving uh, encyclopedia on health, uh, health care. I think you should be in touch with them and uh, uh, you know, uh, acquire as much knowledge as possible. Next uh, category is known as Dr. Copycat. Does not do anything on his or her own, just copies what others are doing. Maybe these people are more dependent on the sales guys the marketing people who come and sell a new medicine to them or a uh, new equipment to them they really don't know uh, what are the advantages or they find that you know a similar equipment is being used elsewhere or a similar medicine is being uh, used or recommended by some other doctor why not me kind of thing
so they will again you know uh, not they are never innovative they are never think on their own so these are people who only respond maybe you can handle them properly manage them properly say that something is being done elsewhere i think uh, they, they will also follow they are good at copying not of course not in the exam uh, but at least in the uh, industry this type person is known as dr articulate speaks very well speaks a lot perhaps and makes sense okay keeps on talking to you again a good source of knowledge speaks you know uh, uh, very well makes sense to you maybe like a mentor maybe like a guru to you okay try to learn from again uh, this person because person is very articulate maybe good in uh, the language maybe you know the corporate language for all of us is english and this person uh, speaks well uh, good to be in touch with this person and uh, uh, maybe also understand because you know there, there are again a good source of knowledge you know what's happening all over the world okay so and then uh, the medicines that re they recommend of course could be uh, you know or the equipment that they use could be some of the benchmark practices uh, it's good to have those in your organization yeah these are uh, my popular or favorite actors from kerala who are they on the pratilas both of them what are they they are the stars so i call these people as dr movie star dresses up well combs properly perhaps best of the tops kurtis or whatever it is whenever he or she comes all of you admire uh, we like to see them very pleasant looking people uh, you know they are like stars you need to again pamper them and uh, they would they move with an air around them there are people who are uh, surrounding them uh, you know they, they want to be in the limelight along with these people uh this again these are the people uh, who move around they perhaps are more actors than performers okay uh, uh, kerala is again a different uh, thing i think you have a lot of actors who are uh, stage artists they are good performers also uh, but uh, when it comes to the actual uh, uh, you know uh, delivering of the service uh, taking care of the patients they may not really click well okay uh, but then uh, there are people you know they, they maybe their assistants uh, do better uh, these guys Uh, like you know some of the stars are uh, popular because of the songs because of the story because of the screenplay and all uh, these stars also could be like that uh, they are very popular here they have good assistants uh, good associates and their name has become popular and everybody thinks that they have done the work actual work may be done by somebody in the background which we won't know so you need to identify whether these are the people on their own they can do well or they depend on somebody else okay so whatever they recommend again uh, uh, you know please be careful uh, check and then uh, decide whether you should buy those materials machine or you know equipment or uh, you know, other things then comes dr nervous you know this person is perhaps very good but is always nervous before performing the surgery after during the surgery after uh, performing the surgery maybe because of the nervousness may make mistakes i think those you know yesterday one uh, uh, you know x ray sheet was shown where maybe the scissors were left behind okay so these are the people who are very nervous and uh, you need to make them confident so that they don't make those mistakes people who are around them and uh, you also want to have to find out whether they took the decision based on uh, because they were nervous uh, you know if if, it, if the decision was because of nervousness then i think you have to be a bit careful then comes mr confident these are doctors you know who just come maybe with a stethoscope in hand nothing else they just come walk in just say hi hello to everybody uh, you know from right from the security guy till the uh, ot maybe even uh, to the patient who is there otherwise you know when somebody like dr nervous comes uh, even the patient gets gets more nervous i have had that when some or small uh, operation had to be done i found all the doctors were nervous you know because the stitch was had to put right below my left eye and then i have to crack a joke so that they become confident okay so whereas you know, if you have doctor confident i think uh, you know it's it's good to have them uh, they are very positive in whatever they do and if they give it time i think they are there at that particular point of time they never delay the ot's they never uh, never uh, delay their visits if they are visiting consultants uh, you know and uh, any decisions that take i think they stand by that uh, then you have uh, the doctor friendly neighborhood spider man always ready to help anybody inside the organization whether it is night shift day shift any of the time you can bank on this person many times you know any time you phone this doctor he or she is available to you any you know suggestion that you want any solution you want any advice that you want i think uh, the uh, doctor spider man is uh, you know the best person to have 
Okay. Then comes somebody called Dr. Philosopher. This person keeps talking about philosophy. Maybe uh, good in uh, uh, surgery, maybe good in his or her practice, but talks about philosophy a lot. Uh, maybe talks about, I don't know, Chichi, Ravi Shankar, or somebody like that. I have been to that program, I have been to this program. I do a lot of yoga you know, every day in the morning you know, without doing any yoga. Maybe the person tries a yoga stunt in front of the uh, you know, sir, patient also on the, in the OT. Uh, maybe still good enough because they speak philosophy, but they have reached that stage. That is why they keep uh, talking about philosophy. They, they are much more mature people. Okay, they may not talk much about the, the uh, surgery, much about the medicines and all. They leave it to you guys because they have reached that level where they speak only about uh, other matters. How it, you know, it's it's uh, important for us to be good. We need to take care of patients and so on. Then you have somebody called Doctor Change Agent. Okay, who keeps making changes. Who does not, uh, you know, stick to anything uh, which has been going on for some time? Yesterday, somebody spoke about Pokai. Okay, uh, again, please uh, remember, uh, I didn't want to counter yesterday. Automation is not Pokai. Okay, he also spoke of some automation. Automation happens, and if you think that automation is Pokai, okay, what will happen is you will uh, wait for the equipment manufacturer or the device manufacturer manufacturer to make changes. Okay, Pokai okay should be in your personal life. You make small changes. You make things foolproof or mistake proof, which is possible for all of us, uh, and uh, we need to find out. Again, like he mentioned, talk to the associates, people who uh, are uh, you know hands-on on the work. They can uh, tell you a lot. Okay, these change agents bring a lot of changes. They attend a lot of programs. They attend a lot of conferences. They believe in making changes. Those who are very Positive about this, like if they have seen yesterday's program, maybe today they have already started. They may have phoned their hospitals or their uh, institutes, wherever they are from, and may have told those guys uh, that this is what I learned. Can we work on these these projects? Okay, so they they, they are the uh, uh, you know positive people. To me, the last category, you know, if you can have those kind of doctors, there are uh, those kind of doctors. Uh, you know, they are known as Dr. Karma Yogis. Uh, they they are beyond everything. Uh, there are people like maybe Mr. Narayan Murthy or uh, Bill Gates. Uh, you may have, uh, I think, Dr. Naresh Trehan, as I know, because from my childhood days, I've been hearing about him. Uh, they, they were all like, uh, not other than Dr. Pandey also, uh, you know, who are all very well known for maybe bypass surgery and those kind of things. So these are the doctors who are like karma yogis. They don't talk about money, they don't talk about business. For them, the patient is very, very important. Uh, you know, uh, like I again said, as I mentioned yesterday, I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Gupta said that unfortunately we use the word customer or consumer, okay. I do not know what is the best word, even the patient, whether it's the right word, uh, maybe client could be a better word, I don't know. Uh, but then, uh, Dr. Karma Yogis are those who believe in taking care of people and with the moment we see them, I think half of our problems disappear uh, because they are so, so nice, so pleasant and uh, uh, maybe uh, they, 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 they're so loving, so caring. So just, you know, these are the, uh, some of the thoughts that I had in my mind. So I created uh, this, you know, maybe yesterday after listening to some of the talks, somewhere there already, some more I added. So based on the types of doctors you have, I think you need to respond. Instead of maybe disliking them, instead of hating them, or instead of appreciating, because I think in the healthcare industry, that's what I've uh, seen. I have noticed because I travel all over the country, sometimes overseas also to talk at uh, healthcare programs, uh, especially in the supply chain area or the admin area, and uh, we all love to hate doctors. So that's an unfortunate thing. We all put the blame on the doctors, saying that because of them we have landed up with uh, uh, a non, uh, uh, you know, non-moving material, non-moving consumable, or an idle uh, equipment or a device. I think if we understand them, uh, we will uh, do better. Okay. So uh, among all the stakeholders, to me, uh, the healthcare specialist, uh, you can also of course replace. Uh, the doctor by a nurse or a, a ward boy or an attendant, they are all uh, specialists in their own area, in some small pockets maybe, uh, but they are all important for us uh, and, and, and uh, we need to work along with them, look at them as partners perhaps uh, in our uh, scheme of things. What are the challenges faced by uh, healthcare supply chain today? Uh, again, uh, uh, you know, like unlike uh, the manufacturing industry, uh, the Mr. Professor Anand yesterday mentioned about manufacturing industry, that's totally different. Okay, there if something is not of the right quality, you can effort to stop the production. Whereas in the, in the healthcare industry, quality is very, very important. That's what also was shared by uh, Dr. Gupta. 
and of course uh, uh, even uh, uh, Colonel Evan Singh also highlighted on that what could happen if things go wrong. Uh, in, in the manufacturing industry, the customers are not in the manufacturing industry. You and me have never been in a perhaps an automobile industry or a toothpaste manufacturing industry or a soap manufacturing industry. Whereas in the healthcare industry, please remember the patient is there in front of you. So patient knows what's happening. And like uh, somebody mentioned, Dr. Google is there. They would have done all the uh, homework and then come and try to meet you. So you can't be fooling them. And there you don't have a cho chance saying that suddenly you find something defective or some, you know, uh, you can't be looking at the SOP. He said you can use SOP every now and then you can't be looking at the SOP and say, oh, this is how I have to put the suture, this is how I have to put, you know, do this, I have to op operate and so on. You can't be doing that. Okay, that works well in the manufacturing industry because I have worked in the manufacturing industry, I have worked in the IT, ITES industry also. I know how it works. In the healthcare, no, there's nothing like that. 100% quality is a must. Whatever you do, there is not, nothing like you know. You have a, a checklist, and then you after the surgery is over, you have put the suture, and then you look at the checklist, and then suddenly say, "Oh, I have forgot on the scissor inside." Okay, let me reopen everything and then take out the scissor. Okay, it, it, that doesn't work. Okay, checklists are all good if you use them proactively. What is important for you is your own attitude. How do you proactively, uh, you know, do do the work? Uh, what is happening in the industry is product life cycle, uh, uh, you know, is becoming shorter and shorter. What is in trend today is not in uh, work tomorrow. Uh, what is being used today may not be used tomorrow. Uh, everything is becoming short, shorts, uh, short, shorter and shorter. And many medicines you will find uh, they have perhaps initially a patent. Once the patent, till the patent is uh, over, I mean, nothing happens. The company is safe. The pharma manufacturer is safe, or the device manufacturer is safe. But once the patent period is over, uh, then comes the problem. They would have already enjoyed uh, their uh, maybe uh, whatever uh, initial uh, steps they took, and that advantage they had because they were the ones who invented those or in introduced that in into the market. So product life cycles become short. You have a expiry life. So please be careful when you buy anything. Uh, please ensure that uh, they are not uh, close to the expiry date. Uh, you have enough time. You know, there's no point in destroying something which are which are, these are all made out of some scarce resources. Uh, because the expiry date uh, you know, has approached, you destroy them. Uh, you are really speaking, uh, maybe reducing the natural resources. We need to think of sustainable practices, and uh, uh, we need to uh, perhaps work towards uh, preserving things. What we also don't do in uh, healthcare, this is from experience, my experience I'm talking about, the profit margins are not really good. Maybe for the pharma manufacturer it is good, for the device manufacturer it is good, but you have somebody called distributor or wholesaler in between, their margins are very, very low. Because their margins are low, they don't respond very well. Even if you try to think of introducing something new, you know, from the hospital, they won't respond because they are, you know, either they are not uh, highly educated, they have some money, so they have decided to uh, have a you know say, uh, go down or warehouse say somewhere in uh, like uh, or some place, or uh, you know they, it's it's one of the businesses that they have. They are really not uh, worried much, and the margins are maybe I don't know four, five percent, five, six percent, which is not good enough because you can keep that money in the bank, and even in the savings bank you can earn more. So uh, you will uh, have this problem. Uh, because they will not uh, respond, they will not cooperate with you if you want to do something uh, uh, different, something new, about which I am going to speak la later. Forecasting will always be a problem. You can't say that you know, in the next month we will have 20 accident cases, uh, 40 bypass surgeries and maybe 10 angioplasts and all that. You know, so many cancer patients will come. You can never focus in the healthcare industry. Uh, it's uh, it's very it's very difficult. You will continue to have this problem of forecasting. That means you will have to be ready 24 by 7 by 365 all the time. Be alert. Again, you do not know which material will be required, which consumer will be required at what what point of time. There is also a, a, a strong requirement for uh, information and communication technology in the healthcare industry. This is what I have realized. You do use HIS, healthcare information system, not good enough according to me. You still do not know uh, in, in, a, in a big hospital, maybe like 800,000 bed and all, uh, you know, there are many, many stock points, okay, uh, various places, maybe at the stores, maybe at the uh, pharmacy, maybe at the uh, ward, maybe at ICU, almost everywhere you keep stocks, okay, and you don't have track of where these stocks are. So you would need to have a good uh, uh, communication technology with you. Maybe you'll have to work with some of the IT companies. 
and then overcome this problem okay next thing is that you know most of us do not have education in supply chain we are not educationally qualified in the area of supply chain we have gone into maybe supply chain by mistake and uh, uh, because we are not uh, educated in those areas we do not know anything about the latest concepts i think that's the biggest problem that's being faced so even when you go back to go, to, uh, go back to your hospitals and maybe talk to your purchase guy or this those guy you'll realize that they don't have any uh, formal back educational background in the area of supply chain okay they have gone into supply chain maybe by mistake or they got pushed into that particular area if somebody gets pushed in you can imagine what kind of ownership he or she has what also gets missed out what i have realized at most of the places is uh, all the conferences i am very sorry to say this uh, it's only the uh, senior guys who attend or maybe students like you who are uh, doing your mh courses who attend who do not go to this kind of program uh, is uh, maybe the uh, you know the uh, other stuff okay so what we need to do is what we will see uh very first thing is these are possible solutions for you guys when you get into the industry or if you are already working if you have high volume products that means something that you buy in large quantity maybe think of just in time get them at uh, consumables when exactly required not before don't keep any stock maybe every day you uh, get the material have a stockless approach i am talking about only about high volume products that means you uh, consume in bulk maybe you are uh, cotton and you know th those kind of things uh, where things are being purchased in bulk why don't you get it every day maybe in the morning rather than keeping them in stock okay the anyway they are used and supplier also is happy to supply to you work with them that's something called smi supply management inventory provide the space to the supplier at your place don't pay for the material the supplier keeps the consumable at your place as and when you use every day you use the supplier will find out supplier representative will be there in your uh, hospital supplier representative checks you know how much has been consumed for that day for that particular quantity he or she bills billing may happen every day billing may happen once in a week or uh, or billing may happen uh, once in a month that billing cycle you can think of but advantage here is that you don't buy the material and keep it and if you don't use it you are uh, you know responsible for the non moving material but if the supplier is the owner you have only provided space to the supplier at your place i think uh, uh, you will you will uh, save lot of money uh, because you are not paid for the material you pay as and when you consume so this is being used in uh, uh, in, in the western uh, countries and uh, in, in uh, all the automobile industries even in india i think in uh, the hospital in india i think it will come very soon all the low well volume medical supplies go by the traditional approach that's my recommendation keep safety stock you know keep stock as based on your experiences whereas high volume don't keep stock low volume please keep the stock because these are all very small requirements maybe unusual requirements or maybe the supplies are very very few they are complex in nature you know technically technologically or maybe the industry itself is uh, very uh, you know uh, capital intensive have a highly uh, robust information and communication system go for erp uh, if it's possible if your organization can spend on erp nothing like it because erp you know, everything works on time online you know right time on time is what they say so you will have the information uh, immediately uh, you know more, more than anything else i i will come to uh, some of the you know one or two it uh, uh, progresses that are, that have been made please keep uh, you know providing scm education to all the scm professionals okay that's very very important let them undergo some courses there are plenty of courses available all over the world even in india i think even in uh, uh, kerala we have uh, courses in the area of supply chain management there is an institute called indian institute of materials management they have a branch in kochi as well as tiruvananthapuram try to go for those courses these are recognized by uh, uh, by the industry uh, by by i think uh, even globally they are all recognized of course my own institute also provides uh, this kind of uh, education we have a tie up with the united nations so we provide uh, some of the international recognized uh, recognized certification courses in the area of supply chain management please don't leave out the doctors they don't attend these kind of uh, programs much okay don't leave out consultants don't you know nurses and uh, you know other hospital staff like ward boys and all they rarely attend any programs i have never seen nurses attending a program on supply chain it has been either the supply chain guys or the admin guys and maybe few surgeons here and there nobody speaks on supply chain and that's an unfortunate thing forget about wholesalers distributors they do not know anything 
I have even heard, you know, where somebody said, you know, in one of the organizations, uh, one of the conferences, uh, you know, the insulins in the uh, distributor's place, you know, they are all, they, these are all supposed to be kept in a, a refrigerated uh, storage system, maybe in a fridge or something like that. In the night to save current, I believe they switch off the AC and then go home. Next day morning they come and then uh, they switch on. Now they may want to save money, but what happens to the efficacy of the uh, 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 medicine? You know, it's all gone. So you need to train those people, you need to talk to those people, maybe formal conferences like this, or maybe uh, you know, uh, even uh, uh, impromptu talks to them whenever you meet them. Just spend some 10 minutes uh, with them. What are the new strategies that are available? This uh, may come as, you know, maybe uh, I may try to provoke you here. What is important uh, for us, I think, is to collaborate. Uh, don't look at other hospitals as your competitors. We all have enough business here. There are, I think, four or five uh, business industries which I feel will never die. One is uh, maybe liquor, never will never die. The education, that's also a big industry. Okay, food industry will also never die. And healthcare also. Okay, <coughs> will never die. So we will all have enough business. You know, whatever uh, uh, care we take, I think we'll still continue to fall sick or uh, you know, make mistakes, maybe accidents and other things. So we will have enough business. So best thing is to create a virtual collaborative supply chain where you come come uh, to together all the hospitals and form a separate company this has already started in the automobile industry where chrysler and general motors they all come together for their you know for their spare parts or for some of the commonly used item they have formed a third organization that takes care of all the purchases and that caters to the need of the automobile industry so why not i have already spoken to uh, some uh, associations like there is an association in karnataka you know, fana called fana a private hospitals and nursing home association i have spoken to them mooted this idea why don't you all come together instead of carrying spare parts for you know at every place for every equipment for every scanner or anything of that sort why don't you have a central spare parts bank so that they keep the spares and then they supply you know supply you just uh, place an order on them and then they supply to you and when they buy in bulk it could be for some of the uh, regularly used common uh, medicines also consumables also you can have this where they buy in bulk they get a better rate and then uh, indirectly you are the owner you can certainly save a lot of money for your organization I apply the milk run concept, how you know milk comes to us every day, I think uh, get this when uh, required. Let them be in a central warehouse than having it at every hospital. Uh, use RFID, there is something called radio frequency identification. Uh, these were expensive earlier, these are not so expensive. Uh, today these are uh, used everywhere, even in uh, the pastries and all, the RFIDs are put, of course they are they melt, you can eat those RFIDs, but in other cases it could be tags and other things. Use this for asset management and tracking of uh, where the uh, various assets are, uh, maybe the equipment, the device, including your cylinders, you know, gas cylinders and all oxygen or uh, cylinders. Use it for patient tracking. Today, if you can put it in a pet dog, you know, there are people who put this in their pet dog, pet dog, why can't you put it in a, uh, in a patient? You know exactly, maybe starting from a newly born child. I, I have been at some of the hospitals where like I was shocked. You know, very well known hospital, at least two cases where the, somebody walked away with a newly born child and the mother and the relatives crying at that time. And after the child has been taken away, they are all looking at maybe CCTV cameras and all. That's more of a post-mortem. So have uh, this maybe for uh, uh, tracking of the patient. Then uh, be, you know, process centric. Uh, you know, so in the process also, at various places, you can have the RFIDs. You will not miss out the scissors and all, uh, you know, in, in, in the wrong areas. Uh, they will all, they can all be tracked uh, properly. Last thing is uh, use the RFID at the point of care, uh, in the maybe in the OT or maybe in the ward, uh, where uh, you know where things are. So you don't keep, uh, to, uh, to, uh, you know, keep, uh, keep manual track of all these items. RFID will certainly help. Not very expensive today for maybe bigger equipment, bigger, bigger machine. Uh, where patients are willing to pay more, I think uh, spending about 200 rupees, 300 rupees uh, is not uh, because today it may cost maybe about 50 or 650 to 200 dollars, depending on what kind of RFID you want. That's not very very expensive. Okay. Ah, what is also important for us? What we miss out is something called supply utilization management. Okay, I recommend this very very uh, strongly. Uh, many a times we think that we should standardize things. In some cases, standardization is not the solution. 
especially in the healthcare industry, please don't go for standardization. What is important for you is perhaps customization. Customization will get you an equipment or a device which suits your requirement. It is like buying a mobile. I do have a mobile. Uh, I don't think I use you know 95 percent of the features. I use mobile only for maybe WhatsApping, maybe Facebook, maybe sending messages, receiving messages, making calls, and receiving calls, and maybe clicking photos. Barring these six or seven features, I don't. Because, but the mobiles are all standardized. Same thing happens with you also. You think that you save money when you standardize your equipment, your machine, but then you will be buying a lot of features which are not required. Go and check all the equipment that you have bought or you have in the hospital. Do you really use every feature there? You will you'll find the answer is no. Most of those don't features you don't use. So better to go for customized su supply of the devices or equipment. That saves you a lot of money. There's no point in having uh, those and not using those. Over specification is another area. We think that we should have better quality product material, we over specify things. We don't need better quality material or products. We want the right quality material or products or machine. Okay, so why over specify things? Same way under specifying, playing safe also could be dangerous for you uh, in the healthcare industry because things may go wrong because you under specify. Then there are uh, problems of value mismatches. Yesterday, uh, Dr. Gupta also mentioned that the architects and the civil engineers are normally not used uh, you know, uh, uh, to the way the healthcare industry works and they come out with fancy designs and all. How many of the patients really look at how nice your reception is, how nice the entrance is. Their major worry is when I reach the hospital, was I taken into the you know emergency room or ward or ICU immediately or not. I think your focus should be more on that. Yes, you need to have maybe a, a, you know, a pleasing uh, environment. Uh, you know, it should be aesthetically nice, pleasant, but doesn't mean that you spend too much money uh, on uh, too many things which are of uh, no, no use. They don't add any value to the hospital or to the uh, patient. Okay, because ultimately you are charging the patient. Then there are problems of old technologies. You may have a lot of equipment, a lot of uh, machine which are still here. You, you know, it's like trying to squeeze as much money out of that as possible. May be dangerous. Uh, because things are changing uh, very fast in the in the area of technology, you need to understand what's happening all over the world. There are a lot of new technologies that are coming. Uh, I also have an organization where you know you know we are trying to introduce a lot of things. I you know I am working on uh, something which where you can maybe create footwear, you know the diabetic footwear using machine. These machines are available. We are trying to uh, import those kind of machines into India. Uh, they're not very expensive. You can just have a machine, and then uh, uh, you know maybe the patient goes there. You, 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 you the footwear also is ready. Maybe in a half an hour or one hour, if the right money is put into the machine. Then there are vending machines where medicines. Again, I, I have a tie-up my, from my company where vending machines are available. Like how you uh, take Coke or Pepsi or Lay's biscuit from a vending machine. You do have these kind of machines for your uh, OTC products where like uh, you know Dolo or uh, maybe even Amritanjan or Vicks or anything of that sort, you just see what is the amount there, what is the number, put the amount into the slot and that machine gets out, uh, get, get, gets out of the machine. You don't have to spend, you know, have people in the chemist shop just to sell this. Have the machine and uh, you, know, you put it on the roadside, uh, maybe a pharmacy is inside, anyway, it's more like an ATM, you know, that's also available. Then there are health care, you know, information kiosks that are there today. There are uh, uh, systems where in the chemist shop, sitting you know on the system, I just say, I want to retry this medicine, I just press the button and that rack comes out. I don't have to search for that medicine. So technology has made a lot of uh, uh, advances. So you need to uh, take out the old technology at the right time and technology keeps changing. So at the right time, you have to make changes. Okay, so you may need skilled people here, but then you know, it's not very difficult to train people. I told you about supply management inventory being used all over the place. I think you should also uh, go for supply management inventory where possible for all the uh, non fast moving items which are uh, used in bulk, which are used regularly. When I say regularly, it's not necessary that it has to be used uh, every day. Yes, this is something uh, interesting, uh, which I think I, I recommend. Uh, you know, you redefine the supplier performance evaluation parameters. Today, you know, we are uh, looking at maybe quality delivery. We are looking at perhaps the service and all that. Okay, what we should I think do is link it. We spoke about some failures yesterday, some problems where you know there are escalations. Hospitals got into trouble. 
please link supplier uh, you know the performance to the uh, you know patient's feedback okay which ultimately the suppliers who are supplying all this uh, consumables and equipment and all let them also talk to maybe the you know, understand what what kind of feedback we got from the customers we collect all the customer feedback we don't discuss that with the suppliers so if necessary facilitate a supplier patient interface interface most of the suppliers they come come and meet the purchase guys the admin guys sell their products or services there they don't land up meeting the patients when they go and meet the patients they may perhaps understand what's really happening there you know the first hand feedback is much more important than anything so we need to redefine the way we are evaluating suppliers performance uh, what is more important is the customers for feedback uh, uh, and then uh, uh, they can do perhaps better because they are the experts in their areas blockchain technology i will not talk much about it uh, because somebody in the afternoon is going to speak on this uh, this talks of maybe you know it, it becomes a, becomes more foolproof when you go for blockchain technology may not be very patient centric as i understand uh, it may be more hospital centric uh, it will it will help the hospital better more than the patients uh, patients today may not be wanting to uh, get into blockchain uh, there is something called internet of things that is uh, you know uh, being used uh, everywhere today uh, maybe we will see with the help of a video how uh, internet of things will help us okay let me see if the rise of the internet of things has potentially life saving applications within the healthcare industry by collecting data from bedside devices viewing patient information and diagnosing in real time the entire system of patient care could be improved not to mention the patient experience. By 2019, 87% of all healthcare organizations will have implemented IoT technology. But today, many healthcare devices operate in silos. Over a third of healthcare organizations don't apply data from connected devices to other business processes. An issue that creates inefficiency potential for data loss, and mistakes in diagnosis. Effective healthcare depends on speed and accuracy, and we have seen a huge range of devices becoming connected as IoT takes hold. Over 50% of devices on healthcare networks in the next two years will be IoT devices. Like those you see here. From handheld devices, to health records, to medical equipment, the industry is embracing the world of connected things. With a common language and a single platform for these devices to operate, the potential for IoT is limitless. For caregivers, the ability to easily monitor and manage patient health can save precious minutes every day. Without having to manually visit each patient, the expert can give a remote diagnosis and track medical assets, providing quality care more quickly and managing the healthcare environment more efficiently. Using sensors and Wi-Fi, the ability to locate the right department in a hospital while retrieving essential information becomes straightforward for both caregivers and patients. Nearly three-quarters of healthcare leaders who have adopted IoT believe its key benefit will be to monitor and control medical devices and sensors. From patient heart monitors to temperature gauges, this real-time data already exists in healthcare. And now it can be used to create a safer and more effective environment. Through a single application on a mobile device, Patients and staff can securely manage IoT data. IoT means an easier and more efficient patient care experience, allowing staff to do their jobs better. Which is why 76% of healthcare leaders predict it's going to transform their industry. Yeah, so that is IoT for you. Okay. So uh, you know this will of course look looks expensive now, but otherwise I think this is what is going to be the future. You will continue to have pressure. You will continue to have uh, uh, maybe uh, a lot of tensions in the, in the area of supply chain. 
uh, in the healthcare industry, but you must try for that value addition. And like I've said, all these new technologies, RFID, SUM, CSC, IoT, they hold the key for the future. That's a nice slide, okay? Uh, with that, I finish my uh, talk. Okay, I always, you know, thanks once again, uh, BMH. I feel that I am part of BMH. Okay, only thing is, my, in my case, BMH is slightly different. My wife also has, she is a half Malu, my incidentally, and uh, her nickname at uh, home is a baby. So I am, you know, so I, I am from the baby managed home. My wife, you know, takes care of everything at home. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. And thank hope you, I know, uh, it was useful for you. Thank you, sir, for that excellent presentation. Now the session is open for discussion. We would like to present a memento to Dr. Mr. Srinivas Rao for the same. I request Dr. Sahasana, Chief of Medicine, Medical Services, BMS, to present the memento to Mr. Srinivas Rao.